Good morning, Parkway. Everybody get on your feet this morning. We've come to worship the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You're good today, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. I'll give thanks to you, Lord, and sing praise to your name, Most High. I'll declare your love in the morning. And your faithfulness by night For you, oh Lord, have made me glad I will sing for joy at the works of your hands And rejoice in what you have done I'll give thanks, I'll give thanks To you, Lord And sing praise to your name most high I'll declare your love in the morning faithfulness by night for you oh lord have made me glad i will sing for joy at the works of your hands and rejoice in what you have done and rejoice in what who can testify oh lord how great are your works oh lord how great are your works
Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him your best praise this morning. Somebody shout praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Woo. Amen. Welcome. Praise God. Welcome. Sunday morning worship here at Parkway. Hallelujah. Today's a great day. Amen. Come on. Today is a great day. A great day in the Lord. Amen. I'm always excited about Sunday mornings. I'm excited about Wednesday nights too. But, but I love Sunday mornings. It's nothing better than to come into this house in the presence of the Lord and share together. Amen and worship and lift up the name of Jesus, amen. Well, I got a word for you this morning, so just take just a minute. You can go ahead and sit down if you want to. I, well, I promise I won't take long, but I got a word for you. And I didn't even ask Pastor, Pastor, I hope you trust me, but so uh, so this morning when Pastor asked, you know, he said uh, it's about moderating the service, I never want to pass up a time that I can share or if I get an opportunity to address the church, I want to seek God for you. I want to be able to deliver a, a word to you if it just takes me 30 seconds. And so, so this morning, you know, I said, Lord, I could come. And I'm already encouraged. I'm excited about coming to the house of the Lord. And I can share my excitement. You know, I, I said, but I want to be able to deliver a good word, a good encouraging word. And he said this. He said, direct them to 2 Chronicles 16 and 9. Now, you don't have to turn in your Bibles, but I'm going to read it to you anyway. 2 Corinthians 16 and 9. And it says this, that the eyes of the Lord roam to and fro throughout the whole earth. And that includes Corbin, by the way. And that includes Parkway. Come on, wave at him this morning. Throughout the whole earth. And what's he doing? He's looking. He's continuously always on the look. Come on. Always on the look for those whose hearts are committed to him. For those whose hearts have gathered together and have committed themselves to Him that love the Lord. Does anybody love the Lord this morning? Now I want you to get on your feet and I want you to give Him a praise because I'm not finished because there's more. Listen to me. Here's the rest of that. And this is where I'm kind of going to stand out here uh, and deliver a word to you because He said there's more to that. And He said, you, as you know, that oftentimes God works in seasons in our lives. And, and, and He does that oftentimes in the church because He'll bring everybody along through the season until everybody gets to a place because God's time is perfect. Somebody say amen. Then, then they'll enter into a new season. Amen. So I've come to tell you this. I believe, I believe that we're in a transition period right now. Come on. And I believe that we're going out of one season and we're coming into another season. And I'm here to tell you that it is a good season, amen? God's always good, but I believe God's bringing us into a season, a time that He's got more. We kicked off this, this year with more in 2024. How many remembers that, amen? But God's got more for us, amen? God's got a, God has got a, a, a great season ahead of us. And if you're not encouraged about that, I'll tell you that I am. I could, I could run this morning, amen? Somebody praise Him this morning. God's got more. He's taking us into a new season, and He's doing it together. Amen. With that said, real quick, I'll try to slow down on the screen. There'll be a QR code. By the way, while they're pulling that up, let me go ahead and tell you that if this is your first time at Parkway, you have come to the right place. Amen. We love you this morning. We just love God, and we love everybody else. Amen. But on the screen is a QR code, and if you scan that QR code, we encourage everybody to do it. That'll take you to www.parkwayministries.com. But if you're new here, if you're a first time, if you're a newcomer, we want you to scan that code. It'll take you to our website, and you'll find out more about us, and we'd like to know more about you. Amen? Because, again, we're just, and just a little bit, we just want to be able to reach out to you and just tell you we were glad that you uh, visited with us and that you found a home here at Parkway. Amen? All right, with that said, Let's get out of our seats for about two minutes. We've got a lot in store for today. Show yourself friendly.
okay? As everybody's making their way back to their seats, we got a few announcements this morning, and we're going to start with the announcement from Danielle Matlock. And Danielle told me to tell you, pardon me, everybody pay attention, she said. She needs your attention. Let's give Danielle our attention this morning. He threatened to tell everybody, shut up and sit down. Good morning, good morning. So this is just the time of month that I wanted to reiterate. We're praying for 24 hours over the nation and the election the first Friday and Saturday of every month through November. So that's going to be next Friday and Saturday starting at noon on Friday, September 6th up to noon on Saturday, September 7th. So I have a sign-up sheet back there for those days. If you all will pick an hour at a time, pick an hour, sign up for that hour. And I've also got prayer points back there if you want to grab a packet just to, to guide you through that prayer. But So we'll be doing this every month, but the sign-up is back there for September, and that's next Friday and Saturday to pray over our nation so we can see a move of God. Thank you. All right. Just a couple of more announcements while we're... We're going in to uh, receive our offering and our tithes and, and more worship. Uh, next Sunday, somebody say next Sunday, September the 1st, we're going to have a water baptism. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. Nothing's greater than seeing souls saved. And so after that, we love to rejoice in water baptism. Amen. So if you would like to be baptized this next Sunday, ASAP, please reach out and contact the church office. Amen. I want to remind you that also on September the 29th, let's all say it together, September the 29th, so last Sunday in September, we're going to be receiving a special offering to settle all of our remaining debt on the church. So let's be mindful of that, and let's see what the Lord uh, would have you to give. Amen? Because uh, we believe, as the church, as the sign says back there, we're a church that is totally free. And we believe that is also includes our finances. Amen. We want freedom. Praise the Lord. Can you imagine the, the outreach that is going to go out of this house? Amen. The ministry. Amen. We're, we're looking at investing that, though, and reaching as many souls as possible. Amen. Another announcement is uh, this Thursday. Carrie, won't you wave at everybody? Everybody know Carrie? She leads our Parkway Move ministry. And that meets every... Oh. That meets every Thursday at 7 o'clock. We've been alternating back from Corbin to London or London to Corbin. And, and uh, so this, uh, this Thursday, we're at the Veterans Park, right, at 7 o'clock. So uh, I've missed the last couple because I've been having to work late, but I intend on being there Thursday. Amen. So that'll be good. Happening today. Let me tell you something that's already happened today. Our college ministry, come on, Billy and, and Amy Cottrell, they've already, and others have already been set up this morning. Have you all saw the pictures yet? I mean, they've already been set up on the campus of the College of the Cumberlands, and they set up there outside the chapel, I believe, right? And they've been uh, letting all the students know that we welcome them here at Parkway. Amen. So they've been down there building relationships already. Some of us hadn't even <clears throat> woke up yet. They were already there. Amen. So that's good. Uh, happening today, right after the service. Oasis, the senior ministry, will be meeting immediately after service in the fellowship hall. And as they always do, they'll have a, a, a good meal there, a time of fellowship, a good devotion. Amen. So if, 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 that, if that speaks to you and you're a senior, I encourage you to be a part of that. Today also at 2 o'clock is our third consecutive Sunday, the single mom's ministry. Uh, we'll be at a new place called the Oaks today. So let me say that, let me recap that. For the past two Sundays, the Single Moms Ministry, and, and all of us in part of, as part of the church, we've been supporting that. We've been going to a different housing development each Sunday at 2 o'clock. And we serve uh, hot dogs and hamburgers, and, and uh, Michael Peters is on the grill, and he's a serving up, he's, he's cooking it, and we've got snow cone machines going, and and uh, 
We've got a lot of school supplies. We're trying to get out in those communities and meet people, build relationships. We want to make contact with those single moms especially. And we want to put school supplies in, in the uh, children's hands. And if you saw some pictures or if you were there last Sunday, we had one time we had a long line right up there. They were getting up the, pack, the backpacks that were full of school supplies. So today at 2 o'clock, we're going to be at just a half a mile from here at a place called the Oaks. It's kind of like right behind the mall over here, behind J.C. Penney. Uh, and to get there, you turn on Old, Old Barberville Road, and it'll be, uh, I think the, the drive is called Oak Place. Oak Place. So if you don't know where that's at, just type in Oak Place in your uh, Google Maps. It'll take you straight to us. That's the day at 2 o'clock. Amen. So there's a lot going on. How many is thankful to be a part of Parkway Ministries? Amen. I am. God is so good. Always something going on. There's, there's something for everybody here at Parkway. Amen. And I would also just say this as the last announcement. If you've not been attending on midweek discipleship, there are some good, we're doing our elective courses right now. And uh, I think uh, Pastor Mark, Pastor Jennifer are in the sanctuary. And they're teaching on the gift of, of, of healing, healing, the, mira the mir miraculous healing that is, that is possible in, in the Lord. And then Chuck and Danielle are, are teaching kingdom marriage. And I, I think this week they've got a special treat for those of you that come out for kingdom marriage. And I'm also set up back here in the back in a little room. And we're teaching the, the senior adults in growing uh, in grace, aging gracefully, rather. Amen. All right. With that said, if our ushers will take their place, we'll receive our tithes and our offering. I know I ask you this often, and we often ask one another this, but has God been good to you? Come on. Has God been good to you? Yeah. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we love you. We're so thankful, God, Lord, to be in your presence, God, Lord, to, to gather in your presence, how you've gathered us here into this place, and there's nobody here by chance, or, but you've gathered us here. You've, you've, you've directed our steps, God. You've made the way here this morning, and we're thankful, Lord God, for this building. We've, we're thankful, Lord, for everything that you've put around us, God. We are truly thankful for our leadership that you've signed over us, God, and Lord, how we can grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord, for the ministry that pours out of this house all throughout the week and, and on Sunday afternoons, God. And Lord, it is our desire that we, we live lives that are pleasing to you, God, but we want to, we want to reach the lost, God. We want, to, we want to reach out into the places, God, that may be forgotten, God. We want, to, we want to go into those places and we want to bring them the hope that is only in Jesus Christ, God. We pray, God, that you would bless the tithes and offerings today. Lord, we pray that it that it build up for the, for the kingdom that pours out of this house, God, that you use through this house, God. Uh, Lord, we talked about uh, being debt-free this morning, being free to do ministry, God. We ask for your blessing upon that too today. As everyone gives, God, let us give cheerfully from a, from a cheerful and, and grateful heart. Today we pray and we glorify you in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. How many is ready to worship? we got a special treat today. Let's get out of our seats. Come on. And let's worship the Lord.
So why would I make a bed in my shame when the fountain of grace is running my way? I know I am yours, and I was made for more. And I know who I am.
praise this morning. He's in the house. We don't want to miss you, Lord. Don't pass us by this morning. Thank you. Somebody lift him up. Come on, we can do better than that. Thank you, Jesus. We don't want to take advantage of you being in the house this morning. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord.
against the world will bow down and say you are God every man will bow down and say you are King so let's start right now why I just want to be with you I just want to be with you King of glory Fill this place I just want to be with you I just want to be with you Yes, the world We'll bow down and say you are God Every man will bow down and say you are King So let's start right now Why would we wait? We can praise you
I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you.
Cause another one is on the way Miracle after miracle Open door after open door Here it comes, so get ready for another one Cause another one is on the way One more time Another one is on the way How many of you know He promises that kind of life? Miracle after miracle. Open door after open door. And I'm looking for that. The Word promised us there'd come a day when the sower would overtake the reaper. Come on. It's harvest time. It's harvest time. Come on, somebody bless the name of the Lord. Come on, we can do better than that. Praise Him. Hallelujah. Praise Him. Praise the name of the Lord. All the glory goes to you, God. I have been waiting and believing since I was a kid when God called me to preach to see a harvest in my day. And I believe we're at that moment and now's the time. I've been waiting for this my whole life. Bless the name of the Lord. I know the shape the world's in. And it's not going to get any better. But where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. And God is about to pour out His Spirit on the earth. Somebody give Him praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Remain standing with me. Turn with me in your Bibles to Luke chapter 11. While you're turning there, let me just say, last Sunday, we were blessed with a phenomenal move of God in the house. And... um, God used Brother Robert Newton. He didn't know anything at all about the history of our church or where we're at at this moment, but God spoke through him over this house, and we thank God for that. He, Lord willing, he is coming back, by the way, in November the second Sunday in November, and he's going to do a Sunday morning, Sunday night with us, and we're going to have a day of revival. Come on, give the Lord praise. And it is harvest time. I said it is harvest time. I said it is harvest time. You have friends, family, people you love and care about, work with, go to school with that you've been praying for. Well, it's time. It's harvest time. Amen. Come on, bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Luke chapter 11, beginning at verse 1. Now it came to pass, as he was praying in a certain place, When Jesus ceased, that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. So he said to them, when you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And I'm going to stop right there. Lord, I thank you. We thank you for your presence today, and we give honor to you. 
Lord, we didn't come for any show to see or be seen by men, but we came to honor and glorify your name today. And God, I pray that you would touch hearts and lives. Lord, there are people all over this room who are struggling and facing things bigger than they are. But Lord, you taught us how to pray, how to call on your name and see you move. And I pray that we would be yielded to you, Lord, nothing else, nothing else is more important or takes precedence over us having an encounter and contact with you these next few moments. And I pray that you'd speak to our hearts, that we'd be yielded to you. Let your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless his name one more time. God bless you and you may be seated. <clears throat> They're getting ready to bring a video up. We're talking right now with God's help about the Jesus prayer. You may know it as the Lord's prayer, but we're talking about the Jesus prayer and today about seeing his name as holy. He was te or regarding his name as holy. He was teaching us how to pray in this scripture and it's very familiar to us to the point so much that Many times we just take it for granted and don't even think about what he was saying. And today we're focusing on hallowed be your name, seeing his name as holy. Roll that video, please. Hello, my name is Laurie Singer Harper, and I would like to say the Lord's Prayer in Jesus' language, Syriac Aramaic dialect, right now for you. Abum Beshmael, Nikadashmoch, Tite Melkuto, Nehwe Sebiono, Aikano Beshmael Aparao. Havlan lakmo sukananyo mono wushbuglan. Haubain watohain. Aikano do panan. Shvakin la hayobain. Olo talan lenesiono. Elo fason min bisho. Metu de delochi. Melkuto halo. Wichishboto. Olom omin. Amen. And God's people said, <clears throat> I share that because that is the literal language and dialect that Jesus would have prayed this prayer in. Of all the things that we can study or learn from Jesus, I'm not sure there's anything more important than learning to pray the way Jesus taught us to pray. It's the Jesus prayer because it is about prayer, but it's about so much more than that. It goes to the core of who we are, of who he wants us to be, and how he wants us to function. Because the way we pray, it comes from the deepest core of our being, and it reflects our innermost attitudes, desires, character, it has to do with the way that we approach God and the way that we approach life. And I'm not sure in the way we approach our eternity. And I'm not sure that we can do anything else or be anything else that God wants us to do and be until we learn how to pray. It is, I'm convinced that it is one of the most basic parts of our job description as a church and the reason for why we exist, to teach people how to pray. You were made in the image of God and we were made for communication and relationship with Him. And this life, the Bible says this life is a vapor. We think it's so real. We think it's all that there is. But the Bible says this life is, a, is passing away like a vapor. 
like the morning fog moving out. Come on. That it's here and it's gone. But all of us were created as eternal souls and how we pray and how we relate to God shapes everything else. Because this life is momentary, but you're going to spend eternity somewhere. This week I heard someone, the testimony, and I'm always intrigued by those testimonies, but of someone who had had a near-death experience and was taken into the presence of the Lord. And their testimony was this. She said, it was not as though I was alive and then I died. She said, it wasn't like that at all. She said, I was alive and then I was more alive. Do you understand what I'm saying? And, and, and this spiritual core is the core of who we are. You're going to live on somewhere and you better know it's not all about this life and you better know how to relate to God. And so Jesus was teaching us how to pray. Now, the Lord's Prayer is given a couple of times in Matthew 6 in the Sermon on the Mount. He's rebutting the, the formalism and the religiosity of the Pharisees. All their praying was simply done to be seen by men and it didn't amount to anything. And basically, Jesus was teaching them how not to pray. But then there comes another moment when the disciples are alone with the Lord and they recognize something about him. Folks, if Jesus prayed, you and I, it's a sure bet you and I probably need to. And probably need to learn how to do it. And, and, and I would be remiss, and I've tried to be very honest about expressing this to you. I'm afraid I've tried to live a life of prayer. I've tried to be a man of prayer. I've tried to be devoted to prayer. That as a person and as a pastor, if I didn't do anything else, I was going to pray. Because I knew that if I didn't get the praying right, nothing else was going to be right. I'm a pastor, but it's not as important that I know how to preach as it is that I know how to pray. And when the disciples came to Jesus, they didn't even ask him to teach them to do miracles. They didn't say, Lord, teach us to, to raise the dead. They didn't say, Lord, teach us how to preach or teach us how to help the poor. They said, Jesus, would you please teach us how to pray because there's something that happens there and everything else flows out of that. And if we don't learn anything else, we've got to learn how to pray. And I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you that I'm afraid too many times. I've tried to live, live that kind of life, but I've prayed amiss. Come on. That word amiss means sick or evil. James said, you have not because you ask not. And when you do ask, you ask amiss. You pray prayers that are sick and evil and centered on you, and it's all about you. <coughs> And I'm not talking about this as a pattern or an outline. I'm not saying I have to recite these precise words every time I go to God. But I am saying that every prayer I pray ought to be the Jesus prayer. It ought to be the Lord's prayer because it ought to be consistent with the way Jesus taught me to pray. And if I'm not doing it that way, then I need to repent and learn better. Too many times in church, I grew up in churches and some of you did too, we'd take 30 minutes taking prayer requests and pray about 30 seconds. And too much of it is all focused on us and prayer should not be about getting, in fact it's not about getting what I want, it's about getting what God wants. And so Jesus starts this and he says, well do it this way. Our Father in heaven. And we talked about that. That's the approach. That's just getting the plane pointed in the right direction down the runway. Come on. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Everybody say, hallowed be thy name. <clears throat> now those aren't just religious words. But it starts with the approach and the attitude, our Father in heaven. I want to thank God. I had a great earthly father. I know some of you weren't blessed with that. And I'm so sorry, I pray that God puts some, some good spiritual fathers in your life. Amen. And you need to seek that out. 
I was blessed with, with a guy who was both my biological father and my spiritual father, and I'm so thankful for that. And as I try to father others, I'm just trying to pass along what he poured into me. But as, as great as my earthly father was, I'm thankful this father's in heaven. Amen. He sees it from a higher perspective. If, he, if there's a God who's not any higher or can't figure out anymore or do any more than I can, we're all in trouble. This is our Father in heaven. And, and it just sets the approach. But then he says, hallowed be thy name. And <clears throat> that my first, the, my first desire when I come to pray is that I pause to worship. That I pause to, before I get, we'll get to our needs and daily bread and all of that and forgiveness and living above sin. But before I get to anything about me, I've got to pause to worship and know who he is. I've got to pause to praise. Literally, Jesus was saying, don't go any farther in prayer before you stop to pray. Don't go any farther in prayer before you stop to worship. Too many of us, we called it prayer, but we just had a pity party and a gripe session with God and we were praying amiss. You've not prayed until you get your eyes off your problem and get your eyes on the greatness of who he is. Prayer is not just about walking through all my heartache and pain. I'll get to that a little later, but my prayer doesn't start with what I'm going through on the earth. My prayer starts with the one who is above it all, who changed my life and saved my soul and I stop to worship. Some of y'all need to help me a little bit. Because <clears throat> we've come to what we call prayer. And the, listen, there's something wrong if the longer you pray, the worse you feel. You're not doing it right. Because you're just rehearsing the problem. I'm thankful he listens to me and we'll get to that in this prayer and he cares, but that's not where I start. I start with stopping to worship. I don't need to go any farther. I get my approach right, but then I don't need to go any farther before I stop to praise him for who he is because he's above it all. He's in heaven. I can praise him. He knows more than I do. Uh, he's the one who's in charge. And I need to stop and get my eyes on him and not just look at what I'm dealing with at the moment because if I can't get my focus on him, I've not prayed. That's the essence of what prayer is. I mean, you need to pray for your kids. And you need to pray for healing. And you need to pray for the blessing of God and the favor of God, and all those things. But I start with saying, God, I don't care what's going on down here. My focus is on you. My focus is on who you are. Amen? Now, so we pause to worship, not just to present our needs and our wants. That is perverted. That is the wrong kind of praying. Come on. Because if you start there, you get soaked up there and you'll never move on. You start by saying, God, I'm not, I'm not going to pray another breath until I hallow your name. Until I worship you and honor you and get my focus on the greatness of your majesty and the greatness of your power. Is anybody here in me? When we hallow his name, what does that mean? Now, God is holy. But when we pray, hallowed be thy name, we are praying that he will be seen as holy and regarded as holy in the earth. That's what we're praying for. Hallowed be your name. I want God that holy, he is spiritually pure. I want God to be seen as holy and regarded as holy. And so before I get to anything else, that's what I'm dealing with. I've got to hallow his name. Before I get to any of my pain, too many of us have reduced prayer to nothing more than our personal slice of pain. Come on. And it's supposed to be more than that. 
God dealt with me very young, teaching me how to pray. You start with who I am. What I'm going through pales in, anything I'm going through pales in comparison to who he is. You say, doesn't God care what I'm going through? Yeah, but if you see who he is, it doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with. It doesn't matter how bad it looks. It doesn't matter what people have said or done. If you see him for who he is, everything else pales compared to that. <clears throat> but I want to hallow his name. Now, I want to give you four means by which I hallow his name. Number one, I hallow his, I, I'm praying for his name to be, for him to be seen and regarded as the holy God that he is. Number one, I hallow his name by the words I speak. Give me my scripture if you would. I hallow his name by the words that I speak. It's coming. I hope. By faith. Hallelujah. Hallowed be your name, Lord. Psalm 141 and 3. I hallow his name by the words I speak. Psalm 141 3. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth and keep watch over the door of my lips. According to that, I ought to be guarded in what I say. Listen, here, here, this will be a revelation, a revelation to some people. Are you all with me? Everybody smile. Everything that goes through your head does not have to come out your mouth. You say, well, I thought it. I may as well say it. Uh-uh, baby. Learn a little wisdom. There's some things you don't need to say. If, you, if you, you say, well, I said it in my heart, well, then pray with it on, pray between you and God on that level, but don't dump it off on somebody else. Come on. Be guarded. I need to be guarded in the words of my mouth. In fact, this is so important that there's another verse that I want to give you that I didn't even give to them upstairs. I want you to turn to it because you need to see it on your phone, in your Bible, whatever you got. Matthew 12 and 36. <clears throat> These are written in red. They're the words of Jesus, but I want you to turn there. Okay, it's important enough. I'm making you turn. Matthew 12, 36. Jesus said, but I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. That's probably our most unfavorite verse in the Bible. Every, every idle word that you speak, you'll give account for. Now, come on, look at me and listen to me for a minute. I'm a pastor, I'm your pastor, and I love you, but we don't need a bunch of cussing Christians. It has become popular nowadays and act like it doesn't matter. I said we don't need a bunch of cussing Christians. For one thing, all the way back to the Ten Commandments, you don't take the name of the Lord in vain. That's absolutely wrong. You don't do that. And besides that, you say, well, Pastor, what if I'm not taking the name of the Lord in vain? If you're talking filthy and nasty and can't control your tongue, it will destroy your witness. There ain't nobody, the Bible said, avoid even the very appearance of evil, even if it looks bad, I don't want to be doing it. Ain't nobody, you're not going to, ain't nobody wants the Jesus you got when you're cussing a blue streak. Ain't nobody going to, ain't nobody think, well, I want what they got when you're cussing. Now, I know some of you think, well, dear Lord, this is church. Surely we don't cuss around here. I ain't that naive. I know some of y'all cuss. And they even got these shirts that, I love Jesus, but I cuss a little. That is lousy theology. When I got saved, my mouth got saved. 
He sanctified me from head to toe. He, he wants a hold of your heart. He wants your hands. He wants your feet. And he wants your mouth. And you don't have any business carrying on that filthy conversation or watching people who are. Take the name of the Lord your God in vain over and over again. I hallow his name by the words I speak. <coughs> Ain't nobody shouting over that one. I mean, it's a shame. We've come, we, I grew up in a lot of legalism, but we've come to a day when I've got to teach people, don't cuss! If you're claiming to be saved, I told you a few weeks ago, if you're going to do that mess and they ask where you go to church, tell them some other church. You've already cussed, lying, and you know, God will forgive you of that too. So just. We are supposed to speak what builds up and not what tears down. I want people, I want to add value to people's lives. I want them to be better because they knew me. There's a few folks I dread to see coming. None of you. But I have known one or two. Some people, and, and, and I know it's not all just cussing, but he said every idle word you speak, you have to stand before God. That I'm to guard my mouth. Well, I can't help it. Yeah, you can help it. He's called the Holy Ghost, and you can help it. Even Donald Trump said Franklin Graham was getting on to him about his cussing. He needs a little help there. I hallow his name by the words I speak. I also, number two, I hallow his name by the life I live. I want him to, I know he's holy, but I want him to be seen as holy. Give me the next scripture. Ezekiel 36 and 23, I will sanctify. Now listen, I'm about to harvest it's harvest time. I want us to reach people. But this is some stuff. If we're going to reach people, we got to hallow his name. We need to cause his name to be seen as holy. I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst, and the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when I am hallowed in you before their eyes. The light, let me ask you, the life I live ought to cause people to see that he's holy. Does the life you, does the way you talk and the life you live cause other people to see that God is holy and worthy of praise and worthy of adoration? We've made grace so greasy slid in and slid out and slid all over the place and well God will forgive me he'll also help you not to do it to begin with I'll get down where we live here in a minute <clears throat> in the last little bit I'm really not kidding I guess I'm kidding but it's true in the last little bit I have had two or three calls from people trying to get a hold of me they did not come to this church but they knew somebody who came to this church whom they were mad at whom they thought acted ugly and they wanted to tell me what kind of members I had everybody smile again Well, there are several things about that. First of all, I can't help what everybody does. I can't control everybody. And besides that, they may not do what I want them to, but I do try to tell them the truth from the pulpit. Now, I acknowledge that people who do that call me to tell on you I acknowledge that they don't have much wisdom. 
In fact, they're nuts. I can't help that. All I can do is preach the truth. So I acknowledge they're nuts. However, it should remind us that you ought to be living the kind of life that doesn't bring reproach on the gospel or the church or your pastor, but honor. Some of y'all need to get all clean off Facebook because you can't handle it. You want to get on there and give everybody a piece of your mind and then invite them to church this Sunday. First of all, don't give them a piece of your mind. You can't afford to lose any. You need all you got. And I do too. God said, my name has been profaned among the nations because of you. I love him and I love this house. And I believe God is doing a work and I thank him. But I want his name to be regarded as holy because of who we are and the greatness of the God we serve. Like we can't afford, to, it's not about the numbers we run. We can't afford to bring reproach on his name. You ought to clap your hands and say amen. <clears throat> People want to act like they're ready to fly away at a moment's notice, not even half living right. I know we don't earn our way into heaven. I'm not saved by good works, but I am saved for good works. I hallow his name by the words I speak, and I hallow his name by the life I live. And number three, I hallow his name by be being very careful what I put his name on. I hallow his name by being very careful what I put his name on. Give me my next passage. This is part of what Jesus was talking about in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, beginning at verse 34. I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it's God's throne, nor by the earth, for it's his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black, but let your yes be yes and your no, no, for whatever is more than these is from the evil one. Part of what Jesus was saying there was, be careful what you put my name on. Be careful what you attach my name to. Folks, God gets blamed for a whole lot of things that he doesn't do. In fact, I'll go farther than that. Even the devil gets blamed for things he didn't do. Some things was just our stupidity. But be careful what you put God's name on. What you say God's in or he's not in. I have seen it so many times over the years people trying to convince me or convince somebody of something and they want to play the God told me card. Well, how do you argue with that? I'm going to do this God told me. I'm sorry, I've just seen a bunch of times that God didn't tell you. God wasn't in that. Your husband may be a rascal, but God did not tell you to divorce him. Well, God wants me to be happy. God wants you to be holy. God wants you to be ready for heaven. Well, he understands how much we love each other. We slept together before we got married. No, he doesn't understand. 
or this or that. We have our own idea or our own interpretation. And we're so quick to put God's name on stuff. A lot of times in cases that God didn't have anything to do with. I want to be careful when I say God's in that. And sometimes when I say God's not in that. Because sometimes I said, I swore God wasn't in some things that I was proved wrong. That I didn't know people's heart, but He did. And so I need to be very careful what I say is God and what I say is not God. I, I hallow His name when I am cautious about what I put His name on. Because it is a reflection on Him. Someone else's salvation can be hindered when I put God's name on something that God's not a part of. And I need to be careful. <clears throat> I hallow his name by being careful what I put his name on. And number four, I hallow his name when I desire for his name to be on this place and on my life. I hallow his name when I desire for his name to be on this place and on my life. Look with me. Give me my last scripture. 2 Chronicles 6 and 6. This is when the temple is being dedicated. And God says, I have chosen Jerusalem that my name may be there. And I have chosen David to be over my people Israel. Listen, it's not about the buildings we have or the programs we put on or the eloquence of our speakers or anything else. I would love, I mean, it's, I love our facility. I'm so thankful for it. We're getting ready to pay it off. It's a miracle from about 1.2 million. It's a big metal building here in the sanctuary and I love it. It's versatile and we can use it for ministry. And it's kind of a big gem, really. But I'd love to know that God has put his name here. That my name is there. That people can meet me there. That my presence is there. And I'd love for God to put his name on my life. That people know that Mark Heisel, he's human. He's not perfect. But I believe that's a man of God. I believe he loves the Lord. Wouldn't you rather that be said about you than... Well, I don't want to go to them. They don't ever have anything good to say. They're always negative. They're always talking about everybody. They're always down. They tell jokes they shouldn't tell. They have a terrible attitude and then want me to go to church with them on Sunday. Come on. I'd like for... God said, I put my name on Jerusalem... I've put my name on that temple. I put my name on David. Christian, they were first called Christians at Antioch. That little suffix, I-A-N, means little or small. So that when you are called a Christian, you are literally being referred to as a little Christ. A little anointed one. Not because I'm God. Not because I'm better than anybody else. Not even because I'm perfect. But because I'm a little bit of what he's a whole lot of. I, is anybody hearing me that I, 
I'm a little version. I, I can't begin to compare with the infinity of who he is, but if I could just be a little bit of what he's a whole lot of, that, that people designate me, that they put his name on me because I remind them of him and I look like him and I act like him and I talk like him. We think we know this prayer and we roll through it and we don't think about what we're saying. Before I get to anything else, to my big toe ache or my little mole hill that I've made a mountain out of, before I get to any of that, hallowed be your name through what people see in me may they be reminded of him can we get real for a minute that it's a struggle maybe for me to do it and I wish I could change the past and I can't, but I pray I pay my child support because I'm going to take care of my kids and I want my ex-wife to know that there's a difference in me. Come on. That I'm not always negative, that I'm not difficult to get along with for my co-workers because I want them to see a little bit of Jesus in me. That when my classmates are messing around, they make fun of me and call me names and call me a virgin if they want to, but I want them to see a little bit of Jesus in me. That when somebody cuts me off in traffic, I don't cuss. But I say praise the Lord anyhow and keep my mind on Jesus and my attitude in the Lord because I want to hallow his name. If you ain't got something this morning that you can put into practice in your daily life, you ain't been listening. <clears throat> I want to pray that. I want to pray that, JB. But I want to live that. Hallowed be thy name. God, through me and through my church, would you be pleased to put your name on this church and on my life? I want people to see you as holy. Somebody say holy. Because of what they see in us. That when we go out into a housing project this afternoon, I know some of them made some poor life choices, but I'm here to love them and to show them Jesus. Let them see a little of Jesus in me. Let your name, let them know that your name is holy. Stand with me. All over this room. Why don't you just lift your hands and praise Him? Because His name is holy. Not for what He's doing for you. Not for what you want Him to do but because of who He is. Because His name is holy. Holy is your name. Hallowed be your name. Holy. Somebody say it. Holy. Holy. Holy is the Lord. The whole earth is full of His glory.
Just close your eyes and worship him for a minute. And hallow his name. Lord, I'd just like to praise your great name. Whatever I'm dealing with is small compared to you. And I just want to exalt and glorify your name. Now listen to me, this is how I feel. I hadn't planned on this, but this is what I feel like doing. I don't want people looking around, but you can pray with me. God, speak to our hearts, saint or sinner. If there's any place in your life that you're struggling with, maybe in your marriage or on your job, temptation that has come and you say I'm struggling to respond in such a way that he is seen as holy it's easy for me to give in to the flesh it's easy for me to do what feels good or what's the easiest at the moment maybe you need God to sanctify your tongue Sanctify your attitude. Maybe people, some people at work or wherever are giving you a hard time. And it's not easy to respond in such a way that He is seen as holy. Saint or sinner, wherever you are, maybe you're struggling to live above sin struggling to keep control of your tongue, struggling to resist temptation, struggling to be the person that God wants you to be. And you say, I'm coming today praying the Jesus prayer. Hallowed be your name. God, in me, my words, the life I live, I pray that others would look on you as holy because they see a little bit in me of what you're a whole lot of. If that bears witness with you, I want you to start getting out of your seat and come to this altar. Come on right now. Come on right now. Come on right now. To handle this in a way that people know that He's holy. They don't have to be impressed with me, but they need to be impressed with Him. This altar's open, come on. I need to treat my wife different. I need to treat my husband different. I need that addiction, that porn addiction gone. I've got temper issues I've struggled for years. I don't like to admit it, but I'm a gossip. I want him to be seen as holy. My God, that's a prayer all of us need to pray. Oh, Lord, hallow your name through me. That wherever I am in the drive through at the grocery store, with the kids, wherever that you're seen as holy. Now, these have, there, I think there are probably others. As they play, sing, however God leads them. I want everybody in the room that will come on, make a move into this altar. Pray with somebody. Pray for yourself. Altar workers, you can pray. God, I, I, want, I want your name to be seen as holy. I want people to know there's a God because of what they see in me. Come on, everybody that will, get in close. Get you a place in the altar. Falling down 